Hey guys, it's Randy Kennard with Heritage Farm. So I got a message the other day from Clint down in Tennessee. He runs a permaculture business down there. Um, he said, I can't believe you're raising hogs. Uh, he's dealt with a lot of wild hogs in his trapping and control business. And uh, he knows that they're just a mean, mean animal at times. Uh, but the wild hogs are nothing like domesticated hogs. Um, I'm sure you could take a domesticated hog and you could breed it to be aggressive, just like you could with a dog. Um, but one of his biggest concerns he was saying was that all I hear about is people complaining that their pigs escape. They're always escaping, get in the neighbor's yard, causing problems, you know, where they shouldn't be. Um, and I think it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, not that Clint said it, but that uh, I hear it a lot is also. And I hear a lot of complaints. You can see it on online forums. People are always like, oh, how do you fence them in? And it's really not that hard. All right, so I'm going to try to move the camera around without... being, you know, disrupting things too bad. So let's see if this works. Um, you can see them now hanging out. We're essentially using electric wire. Let me put my little camera around here. We're essentially using electric wire. Now, these little guys were just put out here on this plot one week ago, seven days ago. I'll back out a little bit. Let's see if this will help. So this is the little shelter we put them in. We put them in this little shed here for, oh, a few weeks to get them used to us. And then we let them out into this small training area. It's not very big. You know, it's, I don't know, it's not very big at all. Probably twice the size of the barn in there. Uh, we wanted to let them out just to learn all about electric fencing. And actually today we need to expand this because it's already getting about six inches of mud in there after just one week. Here's what it looked like last week, brush and grass. And here's this week, there's a pig pee in. So, let me see if I can't come in closer for the fence. All right, so <clears throat> this is what we, our, we phrase as basic training, right? The pigs, when they show up here, they go through an indoctrination phase inside the barn where they just become assimilated to us and they become used to us and what we're doing. And we put them out here in what we call basic training. And here's where they learn about wire. And all we have is two strands of electric wire that's run to these metal pieces of rebar and two plastic insulators. It's pretty slick, goes up super fast. This year, actually, we tried putting up some of this uh, black, I don't know, I think it's like erosion netting. Uh, and the purpose behind this is pigs don't necessarily like to push through things that they can't see, they like to see where they're going. Uh, so it's, it's a psychological barrier, right? When they come up to the fence, we want them to slow down and see what's going on, because they're not going to barrel right through if they can't see the other side. So it slows them down just enough to pause, see the fence, touch it, get nailed, realize it's bad. We have nothing but negative reinforcement along our perimeter. Now when we bring them outside for the first time, we'll actually load up the interior portion of their little paddock here of uh, milk, treats, and we'll give them some muffins and some food and essentially we want an abundance of positive reinforcement on the interior and we want nothing but negative reinforcement along the perimeter. Right? So they're coming out and they're associating the border with negativity and they go to the center and associate that with positivity. So you can see we get this single strand here, and it goes. This actually goes way down the driveway, and it's going to circle way out into the woods. And we're going to probably like eight x the size of this, maybe ten x the size of this plot here. Um, and give them some new room to roam, because uh, like I said, they've only been out here for a week, and they've already got well four inches of mud in some spots. Anyway, you know, they, they just hammered it hard. Um, mostly because it's only the beginning of April. <clears throat> we don't really have any sod yet. We're just starting to get some small grasses coming up. Uh, we had some colt's foot, small dandelion looking little flower come up the other day. Um, but they're still frost on the ground. Um, so there's not gonna be any regeneration, really any sod, it's just gonna turn to mud. Uh, but we wanna get them out of that as much as possible. So we're gonna expand this basic training area. And they've learned, they know what to do with that two wire, two strands of wire. Uh, so today we'll just, just take this one strand 
We'll put them on the barn for 20 minutes, and I'll run this directly right off this wire here. I'll just splice it on, run it, and then cut the other ends. And it will take them a while before they will cross that barrier. Uh, so we'll probably put some a pallet down, and they can start to associate crossing the pallet same way as if we were like a wooden door. Uh, we'll give them some food, and they'll go exploring. Uh, but for the most part, unless the wire goes down, and even when it does, half the time, we just don't have any issues. Or what we find is when they do escape, they're outside the wire and they're so scared that they actually run back in because they want to be back with the herd and they're in an unknown area. Um, and it's worked really well for us. So, if you're having trouble keeping pigs in a fenced-in area, uh, a lot of times, I think that the issue is <clears throat> you have horrible conditions or you have shitty conditions, all right? Uh, these guys have only been here for about a week, and they, in seven days, they have decimated the ground. It's a mud pit. They're inside. They want to get out. Now, they know the fence sucks. There's a big negative reinforcement around the whole thing, and they know in the center is good. This is where we feed them. This is where we pet them. This is where they give them some water. But once they go beyond that, they get nailed. Hello. So if you're having problems keeping pigs, like you've got them in a small pen, you essentially get them in jail, right? They need stimulation, right? If, you, if you're trapped someplace and you can't get out, you're going to be incentivized. You're going to be driven to escape, right? If the grass is greener on the other side, then where do you think you get, they're going to go? Right? Hello. If you can create a set of conditions so where the grass is actually greener on the inside, then there's no incentive for them to try to bust through, bust through your wires or through your gates or whatever you've got. Um, all right. So I think that's all that I can say on that. All right? Uh, you have a fence line. You have you run electric fencing, and you have a nice negative reinforcement that teaches them where not to go, and you have an area of positive reinforcement that teaches them where it's acceptable to go. Just like kids, or dogs, or any other animal. You teach them where not to go, but you make sure you give them places to go, right? You can't run a 10 by 10 electric fence, and that's all they have for their life, and be like, good luck. It's dumb. All right, so I'm gonna, we're out by uh, our large pigs plot, and this one we actually combined the basic training area with their unit. Uh, and about three weeks ago, I was changing out from the solar charger system to a household plug-in AC current uh, system. And when I was doing that, I disconnected the wires to the ch to the fence line, um, and actually separated an entire section uh, that hasn't even been charged now for like about three weeks. Uh, I'll show you that here. Let's see if we can't take. Let me see if we can show it here. So I was up on this tree where our solar charger was, and we ran a wire over this corner post. I don't know how close we can get to show you this, but so right here is one of our wires. You can see it snipped off, and it was connected to those wires. So right now, I don't know if I can get in here or not. There's nothing coming from over here. There's our hot wire that's actually turned on to the rest of the house. But at this post, these two wires down here, there's nothing connecting them. Uh, I've got this dangling wire over here, which had been connected over to here, which is live. And this one down here. So, I don't know, three weeks now, we've had a whole section of fenced off pasture area that hasn't even been on. It's just, it's been inactive. And uh, the pigs haven't escaped yet, and they don't even care. You know, once you condition them, and they know where it's good to go and where it's safe to go, there's nothing compelling them. They have such a big, they probably got an acre and a half for like six pigs right now. They're just not driven to push their luck against the fence and try to escape, even though we're only running this single strand of wire. So electric fencing works, works super awesome. Uh, you just need to set your pigs up for success. 
and have a good management system. That's it. Thanks guys.